All right, first things first, you got to have yourself a 2004 half-ton pickup truck with a faulty EGR valve. Well, we got that covered. Go ahead and get the hood popped open. For safety, as you all know, uh, it's wise to disconnect the battery first for electrical safety. Uh, don't follow my lead on this, I'm going to blow that stuff off. <laughs> Next thing we have to do is locate our EGR valve. There's a couple different types as you know. There's the, I think there's two different electrical kinds. And then there's one of these rigs that uses the old style vacuum EGR. This guy here uses, I think, the most common electrical EGR uh, assembly. There's a uh, terminal connector on here. And that acts, you know, this thing is controlled by the computer or sends off signal to the computer um, so that it works. There's a red safety detent here. I've already taken the liberty to loosen this up with the flathead screwdriver. Use whatever tool works for you. I'm going to go ahead and slide this out of the way and uh, wiggle this terminal away, terminal connector away. As such, looks pretty good. Um, when you go ahead and reassemble this thing, it's a good idea to shoot it with some electrical contact cleaner uh, or some put some dielectric grease in there so you have a solid connection, keeps the water out. Usual spiel. Let's see if I can get the camera in here. I'm going to take the exhaust part off first and as you can see, well hopefully you can see, there are two 8mm bolts that uh, go into one part of the EGR valve manifold assembly. I'm going to back those out now. Okay, here we go. Backing out the uh, two 8mm bolts. Oh, yeah. Gravity check my ratchet. There we go. Let me fish it out of here. All right, you may have uh, different results, but see, I'm using a three-inch extension on here to clear this um, clear this tube. Um, you may have to as well. Uh, I leave it to you to figure that out. I didn't capture this on video, but uh, maybe I should have. I hit. Uh, I hit all the all four bolts with some PB. Uh, I don't know what the PB stands for, power blaster, um, but it's good stuff. It's an anti-seize uh, penetrant lubricant, special sauce, but it works like a champ. Yeah, here we go. Uh, as you see, marked on the bottle, PB, fabulous blaster. Penetrating catalyst, blah blah blah. You know, to give them a shout out, I don't do product endorsements too much, but tell you what, this stuff works great when you have seized up nuts, bolts, what have you. Uh, and look, it's got even the cool little uh, must uh, as seen on TV logo, so that's got to I mean it's legit, right? At any rate, uh, it works good. Use whatever you prefer or use nothing, give it a go. Uh, but I tell you what, anytime um, I'm wrenching on exhaust bolts. They tend to seize up. This has been in there for like nine years, so uh, I figure a little bit of lubricant goes a long way. And uh, tell you what, I thought these two bolts were going to be tough, and they're not. So uh, I don't know if that's a function of the lubricant or just lucky day. I'll take it no matter what. So let's go ahead and finish backing out these things, and less me blah blah blah. I tell you what, the package I got, the EGR valve I got, which I'll touch on more later, came with two gaskets. Unfortunately, it did not come with replacement bolts. Your package may be just like mine. So, uh, these ones are in good shape. Lucky me. So, uh, save your bolts so you don't have to make another run up to the shop buy some more parts. And we fish one out. 
the other one's uh, back here. Let's get this guy up. Put the camera in there a little more. And you can see the extension in the socket. And, uh, there's not a lot of torque on this, which is good. These bolts are good shape. I think uh, hopefully you'll have the same experience I'm having. This is a really uneventful piece of cake. I haven't dropped any F-bombs on this project yet. There we go. Oh, and as per usual, I uh, gravity check that bolt, which I'm going to have to go and, uh, and get. Tell you what, I think you can reach these uh, next two bolts from the top. I may do that. However, I was just down below the truck, and uh, I think I'm going to try from the bottom at first. Let's give it a look. Alright, we crawled up underneath the truck. I'm going to fish the camera up in here. Let's see if I can get a good angle. Hopefully you can see the bottom of the, uh, the EGR valve assembly. I'll point to the leftmost bolt if I can get in here. Right there. There's your leftmost bolt. The other one is uh, uh, right up, right up here. I think it's blocked. By the two. There we go. By a wire. There we go. I don't know if you can make that out. There you go. Okay. Two 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and back those off right now. Same drill as above. You, know, you, you might be able to reach it from the top. I might be able to too, but uh, I don't even feel like fooling with it. So we're going to come down from here. See if we can hit it from below. Uh, okay. I haven't dropped any F bombs yet. But, yeah, we may get there. Kind of hard to do this while working the camera, too. So. <sighs> Tell you what, I'm going to put the camera down and I'll come back at it. <laughs> Alright, here's the deal. Um, I got the, uh, the ratchet socket on there from the bottom, but I couldn't generate enough torque to back it out. I had to uh, do a couple things. First, I had to switch up to a larger ratchet from the uh, small one I had, and I'll capture that in a wrap-up video, a uh, wrap-up segment for this video. Um, still use the same extension. I did have to go up on top of the truck to uh, break the bolt. I went ahead and uh, took the liberty of knocking that other one out. Um, you can say your mileage may vary. Uh, I think for my, for me. Um, Coming at it from the bottom, just to get the uh, get the wrench, get a good purchase on there with the wrench, or rather the ratchet and socket, is best done from below. And once you get it squared away, you can go ahead and uh, climb back up on top, break the bolt, and then either finish the job from up above or you know, come at it again from the bottom. This other nut's proven to be quite the challenge. You don't have any room to work. As per usual. Alright, I think I got it. Alright, we got it. I might be able to break this one from down below. We'll see. I seem to have a pretty good bead on it here. Maybe. Let's see if fortune favors me on this one. Uh, so far, uh, not so good. A uh, little bit. Not, uh, not the best. I think I'm going to go up on top. Alright, we're going to leave the wrench on here, the ratchet on here. I have it precariously balanced. Let's go up on top. Alright, uh, we'll climb back up on top of the truck here. 
see, you can see my uh, my ratchet, my extension goes to the, uh, the second bolt mounting the EGR valve to the uh, to the block. I'm gonna go ahead and break it from here and uh, back it out. Okay, true to form. Mr. Murphy uh, always has to pay you a visit when you're wrenching on these things. And I noticed as I was backing out the uh, backing out the number two bolt that uh, you know uh, once I broke it, it was going along great. But as I noticed the um, the extension and the ratchet started creeping back towards the uh, the belt uh, tensioner pulley. See if I can get a good view on that. And as you can see right now, the uh, the head of the ratchet is butted firmly up against that idler pulley. And as you can see, the EGR valve assembly is still mounted, and I run out of room. So uh, now I've got to uh, delicately uh, kick over the cam on the ratchet and kind of push it back and uh, take the ratchet out and just back off the bolt by hand. So, uh, word to the wise, don't be this guy. Um, use this video to save you from, from this, and as you're backing off this as you're backing at that number two bolt, before you hit your uh, tensioner pulley, pull off your ratchet and just back it off the rest by hand. Hey, maybe that, uh, that'll be worth the price of watching this video alone right there. Alright, I was successful in backing off the, uh, changing the cam position or cam direction on the ratchet and uh, got that basically the nut tightened back up a little bit so I can clear the idler pulley and pull the ratchet out. I'm gonna go ahead and finish backing out bolt number two by hand just using the extension in the 10 millimeter 10 millimeter socket. You might not have to worry about this if you use a different size extension maybe like a two inch cheater extension if you got one. Go for it. Can't tell if I got that bolt back down the way out. I do not. Maybe I do. Can't really tell. Hey, we got some clearance here. Look at that. There's our number two bolt. These are longer than I expected. I'll go ahead and get them measured up for the video. You will know before you even go ahead and start busting this apart. A couple more threads to go. And our EGR valve will be free. Uh, something just fell. I don't know what the hell that was, but... Hopefully it wasn't something expensive. Uh, I think our gasket just fell away. All right, here we go. Go ahead and let that fall free. And there's what we're fishing out. The uh, EGR valve assembly. This guy was throwing a code, I forget what it was, 404 or 406. One of those indicating a uh, replacement for this unit. Hey Max, say hi to everybody. Hey Max. Max. There you go, say hi to everybody. There you go. Hey Jake, you wanna get in there? Yeah. Hey Max. Alright, there's Max, he's helping me out. Alright, we got the uh, old EGR valve. We've got the new one. I went ahead and uh, picked up this BWD. Uh, actually, I got it from Advanced Auto uh, Auto Parts. I took advantage of a promo code. This is uh, EGR1586 uh, M13009. Made in Mexico. Same deal as the truck. That's where it is assembled. So hopefully, it's good. 15 reviews on this thing. As a as being legit. I do have some concerns though. If you look here, I already matched these guys up and the bolt patterns seem to be the right size. We'll go ahead and check out the thread pattern too in a moment. Um, see if I can line these guys up and get a square shot on video. This guy here, the OEM part, it's um, I'd say about nine degrees off horizontal 
versus the uh, replacement part that looks to be right on what would be the x-axis if the uh, y-axis is this the flange that goes to the block. So a little bit of concern there. This goes to the exhaust, you know, the exhaust line. Maybe there's a little bit of flex in there that'll pick up that slop. If not, uh, you'll hear me dropping some F-bombs on the video. Let's go ahead and turn these guys over. I already checked out the holes here for the flange. I think they're going to be fine. But you'll notice in the video, hopefully it'll come out in the video, this orifice here is substantially larger than the, than the uh, replacement. I'm going to go ahead and mic it up see what we get. The, uh, the factory manifold here is about 0.566. I only took one measurement. This isn't for accuracy. This is just for uh, demonstration purposes. So 0.566 for the OEM stock. And as we can see for the, um, the replacement part, eh, for all intents and purposes, it's got a couple of highs and lows. But for all intents and purposes, this guy's uh, 0 0.500, about half an inch. So uh, I'm hoping whatever difference in uh, exhaust gas volume that this change or this difference makes, the computer can adjust for the slot. I didn't mic these guys. Let's take a look, shall we? May as well. Just a second. All right, as we can see here, uh, I slipped off. It's uh, factory side is about 0 0.535. Let's check out the, uh, the replacement. See the uh, factory. The refactory side is uh, 0, .0, 0 0.515. So it too is a little, a little smaller. I went ahead and mic'd up the uh, bolt hole locations, and yeah, they're not 100% spot on, but close enough. Off by a thousandth of an inch tops. Check out our terminals. We got a, uh, a five pin job there, three over two. And same thing here, five pin job here, three over two. So we'll go ahead and get it bolted up. We're going to reuse our bolts. This kit came with the two flanges, one and, and two. We'll go ahead and get those in place. Do your best not to forget to use those. All right, we got uh, four bolts and the two gaskets that came out of the original application. If you're fortunate enough that, that your replacement kit comes with new bolts, go ahead and use them. I did not, so uh, I took care to uh, make sure I didn't bugger these ones up so I could reuse them. I took the liberty of hitting them with some uh, some PB just to wipe them down, clean them up a little bit, and also you know, make it easier to reinstall. The 10 millimeter bolts are about 1.080 inches in length. Uh, looks like the 8 millimeter bolts are about 0.715 inches in length. I went ahead and uh, got the new gasket on there. I pre-threaded the 10 millimeter bolts on the uh, the new assembly and as we all know installation is the reverse of removal. The best line ever! Okay we got the 10 millimeter bolts snugged in there with the new gasket. We're gonna go ahead and put the 8 millimeter bolts in. You can see the uh, flange here is uh, still floating free. We're going to go ahead and take this brand new gasket and this pair of 8 millimeter bolts lightly cleaned up and uh, drive them home. Let's get it done. All right, we got the uh, 8 millimeter bolts uh, hand seated in the uh, manifold. I was concerned that the new EGR valve uh, wasn't going to line up right because uh, earlier in the video I showed you that the, um, the manifold holes were about 8 degrees off of uh, horizontal 
Unfortunately, the uh, flange uh, on the uh, exhaust feed tube is a free float fitting kind of deal, uh, so it should work out just fine. We're going to go ahead and uh, get our socket in there, or uh, ratchet rather, and uh, drive this home. And then the last thing we have to take care of is to uh, reconnect the, uh, the wiring harness to the terminal. And before we make all all said and done, we may go ahead and unhook the battery to reflash the computer. But I think I have a better a better a better thought on that is to leave the battery hooked up and simply take uh, an OBD2 um, scan tool that has the uh, the flash feature and uh, reflash the computer. Okay, we can see uh, got the uh, eight millimeter bolts uh, torqued down on the other side of the uh, EGR assembly, the second manifold. Um, you know the torque specs, give me a shout out, I just torqued this down, uh, took, took a swag on it, uh, based on the torque uh, required to back them out. But, but anyway, uh, hopefully it's good to go, it's always a good idea to ch recheck your work after the fact, make sure you don't have any leaks. Um, this rig should be good to go. Time to get this uh, wiring harness hooked back up. I set it off to the side here. Um, tell you what, I did say to hit it with some electrical contact uh, cleaner or dielectric grease. Let's take a look up in here. I say the contacts are looking pretty good. I have cleaner, but I don't have any dielectric. So for right now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hook her back up. Make sure she's seated properly. She doesn't seem to be wanting to go all the way. Let's see here. Okay, I think I got her snug. Shift the uh, that little lock over. I think she's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and Pull all the tools out of here and do a quick visual inspect. Make sure I got everything clear. Fire the truck up and uh, I'm going to go get the codes flashed. And this project is complete. I'll do a recap in just a bit for the tools necessary uh, and uh, tips for getting a good deal on parts. Alright, we're in the uh, 2004 Dodge Ram. The one that had the uh, throwing a trouble code for a uh, EGR valve. It uh, also was ch chucked tossing the chuck engine light or service engine soon light however you want to call that up on the dashboard here one of the signs of success after a little project like this is to uh, turn over your ride that sounds like uh, victory to me of course the truck is uh, low on fuel and needs some wash <laughs> washer fluid but uh, we look in the top left corner over there and the uh, Service engine soon light is not going off. I haven't had the codes flashed yet by a scan tool. Uh, it's highly likely that the computer will uh, reset itself after it gets some codes off that EGR. Um, some do, some don't. Depend on depends on the CPU or the ECM and your vehicle's application. For this particular rig, uh, uh, it, it looks like it picked up the codes pretty quick off the uh, new unit. I'll see, and if I see it pop back up, I'll, I'll definitely flash the thing. Uh, and if not, we'll let it ride. Anyway, it's just a fun DIY project. Uh, not, not too involved. Some simple tools are necessary. And uh, let's go over those now. Okay, let's cover some tools we needed for this project. Um, we needed uh, some sockets. Specifically for this job, there are two sizes. You need an eight millimeter, and uh, bear with me here. You need also a ten, mic, ten millimeter or ten mic mic. Use any kind of socket set you have. Doesn't have to be uh, this particular style. Uh, I started off with the smaller uh, ratchet because of the clearance issues inside there, but then later discovered I had to bump it up to a larger one just to get the uh, the nuts to break. Uh, once that was done, um, 
I actually roll back to the smaller ratchet because, like I said, a limited space. Um, you also need a drive extension. I recommend the bare bones, you know, three, three and a half inch guy. Use what you got. I don't think you're going to be able to get a bigger socket in there. You might be able to get a stubby in to get this knocked out, but that size worked perfectly fine. I also recommend some kind of lighting. I use this uh, LED flashlight. Use what you got. Um, additional lighting. There's a lot of shadows in there. It's difficult to see. Um, your mileage may vary. Um, I also used a uh, flathead screwdriver to um, clear the, uh, the uh, what do you call that, uh, a little safety latch deal on the, uh, on the wiring harness so uh, I could pull it off the uh, EGR valve terminal. I also recommend that you uh, use some gloves. You don't have to. Just a personal, a personal preference. I like to wear gloves um, just because uh, it's, I find it's better to stay a little bit cleaner for these kind of jobs. You're always going to get dirty as you can see. Um, but use vinyl or nitrile, you know, if you're allergic to the latex or whatever or the, you know, the different kind of gloves they have. But get yourself some gloves. It was in the video, but it's not necessary for this job. I had some... Uh, dial micrometers here just so I could mic out the uh, dimensions and compare the uh, compare the OEM part or the uh, old part to the new and I always like to check these things out and make sure that uh, what I'm about to put some time and effort into is gonna actually fly before I get knee deep into the thing um, those are those are the tools you need uh, I also mentioned in the video to use some uh, some kind of penetrating oil, I use PB because it works. Use uh, what you've tried in the past, um, or nothing. That's it as far as tools go. Uh, oh, eh, I guess you know, last at least, get a shop rag or napkin, whatever, you know, old shirt, dog, cat, something to wipe down your uh, you know wipe down your tools when you're done. Wipe down the uh, flanges on the block and all when you're getting uh, getting the part installed and of course you need the part itself uh, once we move away from tools I got this rig here from advanced auto parts um, I did a little little research online and uh, I got lucky and used a 20 percent off promo code um, typically what I do for these parts is I'll go out to Rock Auto Rock Auto is really aggressive at pricing and they use a lot of name brand parts like Dorman and uh, among others and uh, a lot of stores you can leverage their pricing uh, at the big box retail stores or you know, brick and mortar retail stores. Uh, they, they might grouse and grumble a little bit, but uh, if you have the exact same model uh, and the exact same brand, they tend to uh, they tend to you know roll along with you if you're if you're persistent, and you can save some you can save some money, which is uh, half the fun of doing these DIY projects. And the good thing about checking it online, some of these these sites are pretty impressive. They have detailed images, and uh, you can compare with what you have in your application, so that you're not wasting your time or the shop's time. Uh, no point in all that. We all have other things we need to do, but uh, you know, and it just mitigate minimizes your fritter factor. But as we all know, sometimes the pictures don't always work out with the reality. So uh, even when you get to the shop, bust open the box and uh, make sure <laughs> that. Well, what's in the box is what you think it is. Because, you know, sometimes uh, stuff gets jockeyed around, falls off a truck, gremlins, dust bunnies, who knows. Stuff uh, stuff happens. But um, double check before you go down the road and uh, make your project a success. Hopefully this video uh, shed a little bit more light on it and filled the gaps in. For Like I said, there's lots of other good videos out there already. But, uh, you know, I've checked them out myself. They tend to leave out the parts that involve the heavy lifting, like uh, what do you, how do you have to remove, what are your pitfalls, what do you got to watch out for. Hopefully, I included that in this video, and you'll find it useful. Usual deal: if you like it, like it, and share it with your friends. Uh, throw a comment out there for uh, suggestions for improvement. And uh, so, next time I do one of these how-to deals, uh, I'll make a better one. Thanks for watching.